Hello and welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, very excited to have you here. We are gradually working our way through solving algebraic equations. And today is actually an exciting day because we're moving beyond just simple single variable equations onto um, some things that are a little more interesting and a little more complex. Um, Specifically, we're going to be dealing with things uh, with equations that have absolute value signs in them. Fortunately for us, the same rules are going to apply. Those rules we've been learning all along are going to govern everything we do um, in Algebra 1. So we are going to see them over and over again. So it's a great refresher for us of things we've already talked about. So we've got a lot of ground to cover today. So let's get going. Um, before we begin, I do have an equation here that I have solved for you. Um, notice up here at the top I have an original equation and then I've worked that equation out using all the properties we have learned until we discover down here at the bottom that y must have a value of 3 in order to make the original statement true. Now one of the things I discover with my own students is that they tend to struggle with being able to identify the properties that allow certain things to take place and so I like to give them lots of practice with doing that. So I'm going to do the same thing for you here today. I would recommend that you pause the video, you look through these steps and try and find the property that allows each change to take place just like we've done in the other videos. Now you have two choices. You could either pause the video and go through all the steps and then press play and see if you were correct all the way through or you can go one step at a time pausing and working, pausing and working. It doesn't matter to me either way but once you get done I am going to go through them fairly quickly because as I mentioned this is review and I'm going to assume you've already worked your way through the problems. So here we go. From the first step to the second step, you will notice the only change is that 8 plus 3y has been switched to 3y plus 8. It is addition. Addition, the order does not matter. That is the commutative property. Between steps 2 and 3, you'll notice that the numbers are in the same order. The only thing that has changed is my grouping. I used to have 3y and 8 grouped together, but I regrouped it so my like terms were together. That is the associative property. Addition can be regrouped as much as we want. The next step, I took 7y and 3y, combined that to make 10y. A lot of people call that combining like terms, but the justification for that is the distributive property. Notice we now have that familiar two-step equation form. We should be very, very good at solving these at this point, so I'm just going to go through it quickly. Property of equality to get rid of the plus 8. Do a little computation, in this case subtraction. 8 plus negative 8 gave me the 0. A plus 0 doesn't do anything. That's the additive identity leaving me with 10y equals 30. To get rid of a times 10, I multiply by the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal. That's property of equality. Then I used multiplication or computation and the multiplicative identity. If you are unfamiliar with the two-step equation pattern, equality, computation, identity, I'd recommend you go back and watch that video um, as well. So let's talk about absolute value for just a minute. Absolute value deals exclusively with a number's distance from the origin or zero. So when I graph 5 and negative 5 in a number line, they are in opposite directions, but they are both the exact same distance from the zero. So that if I wanted to, I could write the problem this way. The absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Two separate problems with the exact same solution. I like to think of this um, in terms of walking. If I walk five miles towards home, I might consider that to be a plus five. Well, a negative five would be five miles in the opposite direction, five miles away from home. Toward home is one direction, away from home is another direction. If I'm concerned with the absolute value, what I'm saying is I don't care about the final destination. I just want to know how far I'm going. Maybe I'm tracking my distance on a pedometer or something like that. It doesn't matter where I'm going. I'm only concerned with the distance. That's where absolute value comes in. Um, yeah. Um, you might think of that in terms of, of maybe filling a gas tank as well. I can add five gallons to my gas tank or I can take away five gallons uh, from my gas tank. If I were concerned with direction, adding might be plus, taking away might be minus. But if I'm only concerned with how much maybe the bucket that I'm using to remove the gasoline holds, that would be a, a exclusively a five. Wouldn't matter if we were adding or taking away, the bucket holds the exact same amount. 
So if I were to ask you what for what values of x is the following statement true? The absolute value of x equals 8. What I'm really saying to you is what numbers are 8 spaces away from the 0? What numbers are 8 spaces away from the 0? Well, hopefully you realize there's two answers, 8 and negative 8. So 8 would be that far away, or we could say negative 8 would be that far away. And here's that same thing just written in another way. What numbers are 8 spaces from 0? 8 and negative 8, because 8 is 8 spaces in the positive direction, and negative 8 is 8 spaces in the negative direction. Once we understand conceptually what absolute value is, we can actually turn these into significantly more complex problems. For example, I could say solve this equation for x. Now, before I can measure the distance from 0, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get rid of this plus 2. And I can do that the exact same way we always have. Most of you already know we use the additive inverse. That's going to leave us with x plus, our absolute value of x plus 0. Now you remember we've stopped writing that plus 0 for the sake of time and we're just knowing that that becomes a 0 and adding 0 doesn't do anything. Notice property of equality says do it on the other side as well, that leaves us with 10. So this question becomes what numbers are 10 spaces away from the 0? Well hopefully you know that's 10 or negative 10. Not overly complex, right? Here's another one. You might want to pause the video and try this on your own before moving on. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work my way through it. I see 3 times the quantity or times the absolute value b minus 4 equals 2. Well, I know how to get rid of the minus 4. I use the additive inverse. Notice the property of equality says I have to do it on both sides. Notice also I've stopped writing the plus 0 because that's just taking a lot of extra steps. To get rid of a times 3, I can either multiply by 1 -third, the multiplicative inverse, or that's the same as dividing by 3. Either way, I get the absolute value of b equals 6 divided by 3, which is, of course, a 2. Got another typo here. There we go, which is a 2. So this now says, what numbers are 2 spaces away from the zero. Well, of course, that's going to be two or negative two. Not too bad when the uh, when the slides give you the right answers, right? Here's one. This says I have four absolute values of x's and five absolute value of x's, and I have a minus fifteen. And when I'm finished, I end up with a 39. Well, the plus 15 is easy enough to deal with. We do, or minus 15 is easy enough to deal with. We just add 15 to both sides. Notice again, property of equality says do it to both sides. I'm not writing the zero because of the identity property. I then get over to this four absolute value of x plus five absolute value of x. Um, the distributive property we used before we said if I have 4x plus 5x, that's going to equal 9x. And we had a process we used to explain that that we don't have time to get into today. The same thing is true here. If I have 4 of something and 5 of that same thing, what I actually have is 9 of that thing. It's a distributive property. How do I get rid of a times 9? I either multiply by the reciprocal or I divide both sides by 9. Either way I end up with the absolute value of x equals 6. Remember this is asking me what numbers are 6 spaces away from 0 and of course you know that is 6 or negative 6. That's not bad, right? Let's take it up a notch. Let's suppose I have m minus 9 equals 11 m minus 9 and absolute value bars equals 11. This one's a little trickier because what this says is you have an expression here and whatever this is has to be 11 spaces away from 0. We don't know this number but whatever it is 
it has to be 11 spaces away from 0. Notice the entire expression is inside those absolute value bars. Okay. Well, here's what I do know. If this is going to be 11 spaces away from 0, one of two things has to be true. Either this is going to have to be an 11, because the absolute value of 11 is 11 spaces from 0, or what's inside of here is going to have to be a negative 11, because whatever's inside of here, if it's a negative 11, when I take the absolute value of it, it becomes a positive 11. When you've got an expression inside the absolute value bars, you're going to use some arrows. You're going to split this into two separate problems, one involving the positive 11, one involving the negative 11. Because if you can get either of those values inside these absolute value bars, you're going to be 11 spaces away from 0. Once you split these, it's actually very easy to solve. You just have two very simple equations. Over here on the left, to get rid of a minus 9, I want to do plus 9 on both sides. Over here on the right, to get rid of minus 9, I want to do plus 9 on both sides. Either way, I end up with a 0 that I don't write anymore, so m equals 20. Or over here, I end up with m plus 0, which I don't write anymore, equals negative 2. Both 20 and negative 2 will give me values that are 11 spaces from 0. Let's check that real quick. 20 minus 9 is 11. Absolute value of 11 is 11. If I put a negative 2 in, negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. The absolute value of negative 11 is 11. Either way, these, when plugged into the expression, will make the statement true. Let's try another one of those. Notice this time I have something inside the absolute value and something outside the absolute value. I have to do, um, I have to get rid of the outside before I do the split. So I'm going to subtract that 8 from both sides. Remember, you have to get the absolute value bars by themselves before you do the split because what's inside the absolute value bars has to be 11 spaces from 0. The 8 has nothing to do with that. What inside of here would give me an 11? Well, if the expression is a positive 11, the absolute value of 11 is 11. If the expression is a negative 11, the absolute value of negative 11 would be 11. In both cases, I'm going to subtract the 4. What's left is 7 and negative 15. Those are my two values. Notice I'm using the word or in my answer. That really has to be there because we can use one or we can use the other in order to make this true. Take just a second. You can try this one on your own. Let me know what you think. This one's a little tricky. Um, I probably should have warned you ahead of time. Hopefully you paused the video and tried this on your own. Most people are going to do this something like this. They're going to split this and say, well, m minus 6 equals negative 5, and m minus 6 equals positive 5. Add 6 to both sides you get 1 and 11. I don't know why this says 4 and 14. That should be 1 and 11. That's what most people are going to do. But if we take the time to check those, if we plugged a 1 into this equation, um, remember we would do rewrite. And this is really hard to do with a mouse. I'm not that skilled. If I were to place a 1 in here, 1 minus 6 inside absolute value bars equals negative 5. Well, 1 minus 6 is negative 5 in absolute value bars equals negative 5. Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is just positive 5. That does not equal negative 5. You see, what's going to happen is when I put a 1 in here, I am going to get a negative, a, a negative 5, but when I take the absolute value, it's going to come out as a 
positive 5, not a negative. When I put a, an 11 in here, 11 minus 6 is positive 5. The absolute value of positive 5 is not negative 5, it's positive 5. Remember, we said when we talk about absolute value, we're dealing with the distance from zero without regard to the direction. Because of that, there is no possible way for us to get a negative 5. This has no solutions. The absolute value of a number can never, ever, ever be negative. No solutions at all. Very, very sneaky. I feel a little bad for not warning you ahead of time, but not terribly. Check this out. When we get here, we see that negative 6. A lot of people are going to say, oh, you've, you've, you've already tipped us off. We see that negative 6. Absolute values can't be negative. This is going to be no solution. But we can't make that determination until the absolute value is by itself, which means when I add 8 to both sides to get absolute value of n plus 4 by itself, I have a positive number. This, in fact, can be simplified. I split that, subtract 4 from both sides. Your solutions are negative 2 or negative 6. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to check that one. You can do that on your own, but I really need to keep this moving. Here's another one. You can try this one on your own. Um, again, I'd recommend pausing the video. It is going to do you a whole lot more good to try these on your own so you can see what mistakes you tend to make versus just assuming that you're going to be able to do what I do every single time. Also keep in mind, I've made several typos on here, which uh, means that mistakes can happen for anybody. I'm going to assume you've already worked this out, so I'm going to do it quickly. Add 8 to both sides. Divide both sides by 4. I'm going to split that. My arrows turned out uh, to be white today. Split that in two. I'm going to subtract three from both sides. Divide both sides by negative one. You end up with negative one or seven. I'm going to have to draw these bars in here as well because that's kind of making me crazy. There you go. Hopefully, um, that gives you a pretty good idea of how this works. Um, keep in mind, you're going to want to simplify each side to isolate the absolute value bars first. Then, if there's an expression inside the bars, you're going to split it into two problems and solve them both, making sure that you use the word OR in your final answer. Also keep in mind that if you have the absolute value of x equals a positive number, there's two solutions. If you think of it in terms of a number line, and you're talking about distance from zero, you're going to have a solution that goes to the right, and you're going to have a solution that goes to the left. If x equals zero, there's only one solution. It's zero. And if the absolute value of x is a negative number, we've already said there are no solutions. Once again, I want to thank you for, uh, for taking the time to watch our video. Be sure to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications if this was helpful to you. Feel free to leave some comments in the comment section. Um, I'd love to hear from you, hear what you have to say. If you're a teacher and you found these slides to be useful to you, please know that um, I am making them available as well on TeachersPayTeachers.com, and you can feel to look, uh, free to look for them under my name. Thanks again. You guys take care. Have a good day. Bye.